Hey, it's Rando. How you doing? Nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by to check out my Record Store Day finds. Now, when we went to Record Store Day, we went down to a place called uh, Ignition Garage. And that was down in Goshen, not too far from old Sunny Granger. Uh, although it's not very sunny today. It's kind of rainy, but uh, we're not going to worry about that. All right. So, now the week uh, leading up to Record Store Day... Uh, Half Price Books had their record store week, okay? So basically that means they're taking the stuff they're trying to weed out of their regular sections and put them into cardboard boxes and market them down to a dollar, anywhere from a dollar to $4.99, I think. Well, anyway, most of that was pretty bad. And uh, going through it was kind of uh, mind-numbing, but uh, I did happen to come across this for $3.99. Chuck Berry's second album is called One Dozen Berries. And uh, look at that cover. It's nice and shiny. Um, I think this came out in 1958. And this is a 1962 pressing, but still. For a $3.99, Guitar God. Yeah, got to pick that up, right? I did. Okay, so um, cover looks great. Plays through, minimal noise on it. So that's very nice. Now, there is some water damage on the back of this, but you can't really see it on the front, so it is a nice display copy. And I really dig this. Uh, there's a song in here that almost sounds reggae. It's pretty funny because I've never heard Chuck Berry sound like that. Uh, Rockin' and Reelin's on here, too. Um, great song. So, if you dig uh, early guitar gods, this was a good pickup, right? Awesome. All right, so when we went to Ignition Garage, um, I did find, uh, two of the four titles I was looking for, four, <laughs> I found two of the four titles I was looking for, and, uh, the two I missed out on were the Lou Reed, I'm So Free demos, didn't see that one, um, and the Y Oak, uh, If Children, didn't see that one either, although I do have that one on order. Okay, but I did find this one, it's The Muffs and New Improved Kim Shattuck Demos. This was pretty nice. Uh, she doesn't just play these songs um, with guitar and her voice. She adds bass and drums. So they're fully formed songs. So that's pretty nice. In fact, all the songs on this demo, these demos, actually became the album um, Really, Really Happy. And here's the back side of that. And that was just on black vinyl, but uh, Kim Shattuck, awesome screamer. Uh, really like it. Um, in the punk punk pop genre, whatever you call her genre. Anyway, um, very nice. She was also with the Pandoras and also briefly the bass player for the Pixies. Okay. Kim Shattuck. Demos. Awesome. Then the other Record Store Day pickup I found was this one. Gun Club Live at the Hacienda, 1983. Okay, so I think that was London Hacienda. Anyway, um... Yeah, so it's got this really cool OBI strip. It advertises the color of the uh, album, which is just awesome. And uh, this, I know Record Store Day <laughs> every year means a new Gun Club Live album. <laughs> Seems to be for the last three years, right? But this one, I really recommend. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey Lee Pierce on here. Um, I don't know. He, he must have been drinking a lot of caffeine before this show because he's pretty wild on this. Okay. Um, or something else. Right. Okay, anyway, and it also uh, has uh, uh, Patricia Morrison on there, Pat Bag, whatever you want to call her, and there you go. Pretty nice. Um, recommended? Okay, so that was an excellent one. All right, so those were basically my two pickups, but I did pick up a couple of other albums while I was at the um, Ignition Garage, and one of them was this, Psychedelic Furs and Mirror Moves. Now, this has one of my favorite songs from the 80s on it um, called The Ghost in You. And also has the song uh, Here Come Cowboys, which is really good on here, too. Um, side two on here is pretty rough. In fact, this isn't probably isn't one of their best albums. Uh, in fact, it's probably on the lower tier, but that's okay. Um, it does have some really good songs on here. So, really dig it. And it was $11, so... Nice find, used, of course. And another new one I got from there was this one, Cro-Mags, The Age of Quarrel. Now, this is kind of a, I, I'm sure you've heard these guys are kind of 
punk metal. Uh, <laughs> very good, very good sound to these guys. Uh, very doomy, <laughs> as you can tell by the cover, right? Okay, so yeah, they've uh, released this a couple of times here, re-released this a couple of uh, years in a row now, and uh, I thought I'd better pick up one before they go out of print or whatever. Um, excellent. I had heard a couple of songs off there and and before, and um, I thought, wow, pretty good. So listen to the whole album. Yeah, it was a good. One. All right, so that was my record store day uh, finds. Then after that, went to back to the old honey hole at <laughs> Half Price Books and found this other 80s seminal song, um, It's My Life, well, album. The song on here, though, It's My Life, is, you know, one of the best 80s songs in my mind. And um, this is a European version. Um, it's got the really thin sleeve, and it has the permanent height sticker on there that's, like, part of the album. Um, so, very nice. Um, kind of a slow burner album, but uh, a song in here, um, Call in the Night Boy and Does Carolyn Know. Those are, those are very good other minor tracks on this that um, I like a lot. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that, but, you know, you want old Rando's take on that, right? Right. Okay. Okay, next one was um, actually suggested to me by the Omaha Introvert, and it is Ringo Death Star. Now, I didn't find this one at Half Price Books. I had to order this one on uh, Discogs, but, uh, yeah, check out the hype sticker there. Yeah, this is a... Uh, Straight up a uh, shoegaze space rock kind of uh, kind of sound going on here, and um, it's a trio. Um, Alex Gehring, uh, her voice seems to just float on and on forever on a lot of these songs, and uh, that gives it the spacey feel. Elliot is on the more uh, more heavier songs with the bendy guitars and the uh, My Bloody Valentine um, kind of uh, ethics. So very nice. Um, check it out. It is, a, it is a very good album and very unique, too. Oh, and by the way, it is on this uh, Coke bottle looking stuff here. Nice. And, uh, yeah, you ever been not able to find a hotel room and had to sleep on top of your luggage? Happens. Okay. The next one I found was Broadcast and the Focus Group. Investigate which cults of the radio age. Now, <laughs> This is, uh, I think, Broadcast's best album, uh, Trish Keenan. Um, she's a very good singer, uh, by the way, and she does sing a couple of songs on here, which uh, are great. Uh, uh, rest in peace, by the way, Trish. Um, anyway, um, this is, this is uh, excellent. I've had this on my computer probably since it came out in 2009, and uh, it's nice to get a physical copy of this. It is, of course... Kind of uh, found sounds, uh, sound effects, uh, musical interludes. It's just great. Um, give it a give it a listen. You're probably going to have to listen to the whole album to get the uh, whole concept going on here. But uh, yeah, listen to it. It's very good. Broadcast and focus group. Investigate which cults of the radio age. All right. Okay, so. My last two here I found at Barnes & Noble's just looking for uh, Record Store Day stuff that I may have missed. Of course, they didn't have any there, but they did have a couple of things I had to pick up. They did not have that Lou Reed uh, demos that I was looking for, but they did have this. The Velvet Underground and this uh, soundtrack to a documentary film by Todd Haynes. Um, it's a double album, and here's the gatefold. And... Uh, it has not only the Velvet Underground on here, um, like Side 1 and Side 2 has a couple of different uh, bands, like uh, Nico's on here and The Primitives, which I believe was Lou Reed's uh, first, one of his first bands. And uh, there's also even a Bo Diddley song on here, but uh, for the most part, it's all Velvet Underground. Um, when I saw the 19-minute version of Sister Ray, I had to get this. Now, it doesn't sound like the one at uh, Cleveland's La Cave or, or the Boston Tea Party. It sounds a little bit like the one um, at the end of Cole Avenue in Dallas um, when they do those live shows. Okay, so um, very good. Side four, listen to side four of this. Now, these are just a classic lineup here. It's uh, Foggy Notion, one of my favorite songs by him. Uh, After Hours Live, um, Sweet Jane, Ocean, and All Tomorrow's Parties. 
just excellent. All Tomorrow's Party is a great way to end this documentary if that's what they did, in fact. So, awesome. And then we come to the last album I found. Um, this album is probably my favorite album so far this year um, that came out this year. And it is this, Wet Leg. And uh, these two college friends from the Isle of Wight put together this <laughs> great album. Um, Chaise Lounge was kind of the single off of this that kind of brought this whole album together. But that's that's a minor song in here to me. Um, <laughs> Wet Dream, um, Angelica, uh, Your Mom, and Piece of Shit. <laughs> Very post-punk. Uh, they have some 90s alternative mixed in there, but most of it is uh, indie rock and uh, very, very good guitar on this. Um, very good uh, hook lines on this <laughs> um, lyrically. They're great. Um, yeah, it's just everything comes together on this album. Uh, everything that I like, it's just uh, <laughs> it's just something you have to experience. Um, when you just talk about it, it doesn't it doesn't sound as good as it is. <laughs> So, yeah, check it out. Hey, well, thanks for stopping by to check out my record store day finds. Um, it was a lot of fun this year. And, uh, yeah, if uh, you liked anything you saw, let me know down in the comments or give me a thumbs up, something like that. And uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And uh, I can't wait to see your record store day finds.